Welcome to another tech tip from Area 66. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to take a quick look at Google Docs versus Apple Pages for content creation on the iPad. Um, I know I've gotten a lot of questions about Docs versus Pages. Um, both are word processing applications, and both of them are installed by default on our school iPads. And so I thought it would be good to take a look at when you should use Docs and when you should use Pages. So let's take a look here. If we want to compare features a little bit between Pages and Google Docs, you'll see there really is a stark difference between the two. Um, Apple's Pages is really a full-featured application, just like you would think of Pages on the desktop. Um, it's full of rich templates, meaning you can make flyers and brochures and you know trifolds and posters. You know, you know, in addition to typing up reports and doing basic word processing. Um, it really does have full-featured editing built in. You know, everything from double-spacing lines to, you know, having styles to being able to, you know, format the text how you would like it. Pretty much anything you can do on the desktop, you're able to do on the iPad. Um, it also has a, a little bit better full-screen, on-screen keyboard. And what I mean by that is, in addition to be able to just type, it has some, you know, formatting options that are built into the keyboard itself. And there's even a tab key that Apple's added on to it. So if you want to tab at the beginning of a paragraph, Pages allows you to do that. And we'll take a look at that in a second here. Um, it also does have the most formatting options. Um, however, with Pages, um, collaboration is a little more complicated. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't integrate with Drive as well. You have to save a copy. Um, but it does offer some ways, different ways to turn work in and to collaborate together. When we look at Google Docs, on the other hand, um, Google Docs is really meant for collaboration. It's probably the easiest thing to use if you want to have multiple students or even teachers and students working together on a document. However, it does require the use of an external keyboard to get that tab key back. Uh, the default keyboard that Google Docs uses doesn't have a tab key on it, which I know is a downside for many people. Um, Google Docs also doesn't have the built-in templates like Pages does. So if you're looking to build a brochure, you're looking to you know, make a flyer or a trifold and things like that, Google Docs doesn't have those kind of things built in. Um, Google Docs also has some limited formatting options. You'll see in a minute here that you have your basic formatting. You can do styles, bold, underline, strike through, things like that but you really aren't able to add tables or easily add images or do a lot of the, the, the nice things that Pages allows you to do. Um, though, going back to that theme of collaboration, Google Docs really does integrate well with the web version. So if you have a teacher make something on the web version and then share that with students, most of those items, including pictures, will come down on the iPad for the students to look at. So let's take a little deeper dive here and let's take a look at Google Docs and take a look at Pages so you can see some of the things that I'm talking about. So let me go ahead here and open up Google. And so I'm going to open up Google Docs. And the first thing you're going to notice is just how easily this syncs with Google Drive. So these are all of the different documents that I've created in my Google Drive and those show up for me to pick from. And so when we talk about collaboration, we can look over here and under the incoming, these are all of the different documents that have been shared with me. And it's really quick, it's really easy, it's a one tap open to get access to those. If I want to make a new document, I just go ahead and hit this plus down here in the bottom right corner. And I get my choice of naming it, so I'm just going to call it test. And I can see here, this is kind of a basic, bare bones, no frills, word processing environment. I can start typing. Hello world, how are you? And you'll see if I want to do any kind of formatting, I'll select it here and I can come up, I can bold that, I can italicize it, I can underline it. Um, I have the option of making it a bulleted list if I wanted to. Or if I click the A, I get some access to a little bit of the advanced features that Google has, which isn't very many, but it should get you done with most of the things that you'd want to do. Um, you'll see I can use my styles. So if I really did want to try to format a document, I can pick a heading. I can go through and then pick, you know, sub-styles. 
Uh, you can choose your fonts, and the fonts that it has is limited to, to basically the same fonts that are on the web. Um, you can choose different sizes, either bigger or smaller. And then for your paragraph, I can also choose to center, left justify, right justify, or indent the entire paragraph. As far as formatting options go, that's about it with Google Docs. Remember, this is a quick, easy way just to get text down and there's not a whole lot, lot of formatting and making it look really pretty. This is a pretty basic editor, but what it does have going for it is that idea of collaboration. If you're looking for a more full-featured word processing and content creation application, this is where Apple's Pages really shine. So when I launch Pages, you'll see a list of the documents that I've created with Pages. If I click the Create a Document Plus, I get access to the different templates. And so whereas Google Docs just basically presented us a blank page and told us to type, Pages gives us a choice of choosing from pre-formatted reports, uh, letters, resumes, envelopes, business cards, and then my personal favorite, these flyers and posters, where you can have a one-page poster, you can have cards, you can do a trifold brochure, the museum and the elegant, you can have newsletters. I know some teachers like to do an end-of-the-year newsletter. This has the templates that are built in for you to use. Uh, for this case, though, I'm just going to go ahead and choose blank. And the first thing you'll notice is this keyboard here is a little different than the keyboard that pops up in the Google Docs. Uh, namely, over here on the left, you have the tab key. And I can type a little more. And so it has that built in. It also has the different font choices built in. So if I want to type in a bigger font, that's all right there for me. Um, pages, other power comes from the menu up on the top. And so if I tap that paintbrush there, this is where I can see all of my different formatting options. So like Google, I have the basic paragraph styles, the bolding, the italicizing, the underlining. I can see my different styles, titles, subtitles, headings, things like that. My list, I can do the same bulleted list. But one of the things that people like about pages is in addition to that, you also have the option to create multi-columns of text and everybody's favorite, I can go ahead and I can set my line spacing to double spaced. Another nice thing about pages is we have the ability by clicking the plus menu to add all of these different graphical elements. I can go ahead and I can click and I can insert charts and I can move those charts around. I also have the ability to go in and add interactive charts and graphs. I can go in and I can add shapes to my text and all of these things can be configured as far as how the text wraps around it. Now when it comes to sharing, Pages is a little bit more limited than Docs. Um, if I click the share icon here, I can see my options. Um, I can send a copy, so if I wanted to email this document, I can go and choose what format I want to email it in, either a Pages document, a PDF, a Word, or an EPUB. If I wanted to get this document into Google Drive, I can actually do that. If I hit the Share and I hit Open in another app, I'm going to choose a Word file because that's something that Google understands. And then I can come over here and I can select Google Drive. And then this actually goes through and it saves that document into my Google Drive as a Word file that I can then send out and share with other people if I wanted them to make comments or make suggestions on it. So that's kind of a quick overview of Google Docs and Pages, but let's talk about when you should use each app. Pages is really good when students are working mostly individually. Um, it's also really great when you need those page layout features, such as the templates or adding images or tables or charts and graphs to your document. And so basically, anything, anytime you're looking for a really desktop-like experience with typing, Pages is probably the best app to go to. Now that being said, there is a place for Google Docs, and really it comes into play when we're working in groups. Um, Google Docs, like I said, set up for collaboration. It works great when you're using groups. Um, typing those things together, it's just, it's much easier than trying to use pages. Um, and it's also really good when you need that drive integration without having to do open in, because anything you create in Google Docs is automatically saved 
in Google Drive, and you don't have to worry about doing any, any additional things to it. Um, another thing that I kind of like as a way to kind of combine these two, you know, these two applications together is if we use an example of a class that's creating a newspaper. Um, the way I would do it is I would use Google Docs to have students work together to actually type up the content of each article. And that way they can peer edit, they can review each other, the teacher can hop into those Google Docs if they're shared with the teacher, and he or she can make comments and suggestions, and you get all of the text perfect in Google Docs. And then when it comes time to actually assemble the newsletter, everybody shares their docs with a student or a teacher, and then that person takes those and copies and pastes the text into the pages template, does all of the page layout work, you know, as far as spacing and images and formatting the fonts and making it look just perfect. And then from pages, you know, maybe saving that as a PDF, putting it back into Google Drive so everybody can have access and read that newspaper. You know, the teacher can send that link to that PDF home to parents and so parents can look at the newsletter. And it, it works together, the Google Docs and the pages and Google Drive to create it. Now that kind of app smashing we'll deal with in another tech tidbit to come later on, but I just wanted to give you a preview of how, you know, it doesn't have to be an either or between Google Docs and Pages. You can combine those two together. So from Area 66, this has been another tech tip. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out to Bridget or myself, and we're happy to walk you through any of the things that we've discussed in today's episode. Thank you.